Welcome to part four of my beginner Unreal Engine tutorial. Now, we are going to be making a very similar file to the one that we had just done in part three, except this time the widget is not going to show up until we actually enter a box trigger. So when our player pawn enters a specified area, then it's going to pop up. We're not going to be making it disappear when we leave that box for now because that's going to be the next tutorial. This one is just strictly going to be looking at how to make it activated. This is going to be a little bit of an introduction to how a box trigger works. And this is how you can trigger events that aren't just like begin play. It lets you have a little more customization about when those widgets are actually going to be called. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. We should be good to get going. We're going to be following the same beginner steps that we did in the previous one. So we're going to launch the version of Unreal Engine that you're using. And once this launches, we are going to be creating a whole new file. I don't want to use the same file as I was using the last time because I want it to be an all new project. We're going to repeat the steps that we had just done so that it gets just completely locked into your memory and that there's no question about what to do. And I think that that is very important to when you're learning Unreal Engine, just keep doing it over and over again, get very familiar with the entire software. So we'll call this tut4 and event widget. I don't know, or maybe I'll call this trigger box. Trigger box widget. Whatever, close enough. Okay. And everything looked good there. Create project. Great. So as we did in the last one, I'm going to come up here to play new editor window. So that's set to the new mode. As you can see, hit play. You get this window. I like that a lot more. We're going to come down to the content browser again, user interface, widget blueprint, hello world again, hit save. And I'm going to be going a little bit faster this time. So we're going to come in here. We're going to go up to the palette, type in horizontal box, drag that into canvas panel, drag this over here. We're going to go text, drag that into horizontal box, and then we're going to go fill horizontally align, vertically align. We're going to go font 80. And then we're going to change the text to Hello World. Actually, I'm going to put a space in there again. Okay, so that's what we want. I'm going to compile it, it works, save it, the widgets done, that's all we need to focus on for now. And the next thing that we are going to do before we go into level blueprints is we are actually going to drop a box trigger this time. So if you come over to your place actors inside of basic, you just have a box trigger. So that is, that's it right there. However, it's not big enough. So what we can do is we can hit R to go into scale mode and you have the ability to just change them up here if you want, but R is much faster. So we're just going to drag this like this, drag it like this. And I'm going to actually hit W again. I'm going to drag it over here a little bit more. Then I'm going to drag it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just so that our player can get inside of it. Right. So that's all we need to do. I'm going to save before we do anything else. And then I'm going to open up the level blueprints. Now, this is something that I did not really know of when I first started to learn Unreal Engine, but there's actually a, a very easy way to reference everything. And some people may be like, oh, well, that's pretty obvious, but I feel like a lot of people don't actually know this when they start with Unreal Engine. Make sure that your box trigger is selected when you go into the level blueprints, because it's gonna give you the option to just directly reference it, and that saves a lot of time. So as you can see, if we right click, there's actually create reference to a box trigger, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in add on, actor overlap and then this uh, this symbol here means an event so it's going to add on an actor when we begin the overlap so when our pawn interacts with or sorry goes inside of the box trigger this is what we want to have happen so as you can see here on actor begin overlap and then in brackets it says trigger box so this is a reference to the trigger box that we have right there now, it's going to be the exact same as what we are doing, except in, in the event is now when we overlap with the box, not when we begin play. We go create widget class hello world. 
And then if you remember from the last time, we actually have to right click on the return value, promote to variable. We're going to go add to viewport. We're going to plug it in here, hit compile save and i did mention this in the last one if you are getting an error here it, i feel like the chances are it's because you don't have the widget plugged in here so as you can see if i hit compile it says error make sure that the correct widget is set here compile save we can exit out of that let's hit play okay so right off the bat we can't see the widget and that's good because we did in this one we don't have it set to begin play but if i hold w and go forward Oh, sorry, I have to click on that. As you can see, as soon as we go into that box trigger, we see hello world. But if I back out of the box, it's not disappearing. So that's the end of this tutorial. But in the next one, I'm going to show you how to make that disappear so that whenever you go in and out of the box, it's going to give you that menu more or less. So this one just says hello world because it's a placeholder. But there are a lot of options where if you're maybe making a game or you're doing some for Archviz where you walk in a particular room, you're going to get a menu. But then when you leave the room, that menu is gone and you have to be in that particular area to have the event happen. So I hope you learned something in this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.